So Debian 13, codenamed Trixie, was released a little while ago. I've got a video here on this channel covering all of the things that have changed, what's new, and so on. Now, of course, Debian is the foundation of several popular Linux distros, including Ubuntu, and the subject of this video, Raspberry Pi OS. Now, Raspberry Pi OS is a Linux distro that runs on the Raspberry Pi boards and also on the Raspberry Pi computers like the Pi 500 and it's now been upgraded to Debian 13 uh, Trixie. So in this video I want to show you what's new, what's changed, also some new changes that have come just from the Raspberry Pi people and so lots of stuff to cover. So if you want to find out more please let me explain. Okay, the easiest way to get the Trixie version of Raspberry Pi OS is to use the Raspberry Pi Imager. Make sure you are using the latest version. Once you have it up and running, you need to pick your device. In this case, I'm picking a Raspberry Pi 500, which is based on the Raspberry Pi 5. You pick Trixie, which is the first one there on the list, and then you pick your SD card. Once you press next, you have the option to edit the settings, which allows you to set the host name, your username and password, the Wi-Fi password, and so on. Once you've done that, you want to click yes to say you want to apply those settings, and then you want to agree the fact that you're going to wipe over everything on the SD card, and it will then start writing the image to the SD card. Once it's finished, you can eject the card and pop it into your Raspberry Pi device. Okay, once the system boots up, the obvious change is the wallpaper. That's the first thing you see, different to the previous version of Raspberry Pi OS, and the icons are different. If we look up here, we can see there are new icons, uh, a new theme, so everything looks a bit different, but of course, it behaves in exactly the same way. Now, of course, this is uh, Deb Ian Trixie, so of course, we've got all the things I talked about in my previous video about that. So for example, you've got the new kernel running, in this case, 6.12.47. But the biggest change for the average user is now, here in preferences, we have a new control center. So this is the new way in which you can configure your Raspberry Pi. So you can configure the uh, all the different aspects here. For example, the desktop, we could change that image there if we wanted to, to all different kind of images that they are including with the system. So what was that original one? Sunrise, that's it there. Of course, you can configure the displays, the various interfaces, for example, Secure Shell, VNC, SPI, I squared C, and so on. You can configure the keyboard, the localization, the mouse, the performance, the printers, the screens. It's all the stuff you could do previously is now all in one new control center. Fairly easy to use. For example, here, theme dark. Let's switch this over to a dark theme. There we go. Absolutely simple. And that's it. Besides that, everything is the same. Of course, you've got all the same software. You can get hold of all the programming stuff you want. You can Chromium, Firefox. You can, of course, install things like LibreOffice for doing your Office documents. You've got graphics programs. Everything you could do with a Raspberry Pi. Of course, you can still do it with this. This is an upgrade, not a downgrade. And it looks pretty good. Now, one final thing to mention in closing is that it's not recommended that you upgrade from the previous version based on Bookworm. And really, as it says here, as with all major upgrades, we do not recommend or support attempting to upgrade a running Bookworm image. And they go on to say that we know that some people will insist on trying to do it. They say, we strongly suggest that you don't. But they still go on to give you some instructions and they tell you it is possible, but there's no guarantee it will work and definitely make sure you do a backup. The recommended method is to flash a clean copy of Trixie image if you use the Raspberry Pi Imager, which is what I showed you, or downloading the image directly from the OS download page. So I wouldn't attempt the upgrade myself. Best thing is to just copy over any data that you need, any files you've got, and do a fresh install. It will be the safest thing to do in the long run. Okay, that's it. Love to hear what your thoughts are about this in the comments. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.